It wouldn't be a Pyron Man showcase without Iron Man in it, right? Hello guys, you may be seeing my live stream in which I've opened yet another mini PC case, this time from Sunfounder. The case name is Pyron Man. It's an obvious take on Iron Man and the Raspberry Pi. The case is for Raspberry Pi 4 and it's pretty cool. But if you follow me for some time, you probably know this is not the first mini PC form factor case that I have in my selection. Previously, I've talked about a 52 Pi take on the case like this. However, Pyron Man, well, it has a couple of advantages compared to these. The two most striking features of that case is the fact that it's partially made from metal, all the shiny silver panels are actually made from aluminium, and obviously side panels are made from uh, translucent acrylic. But the second and uh, the feature that I'm really excited about is the fact that entire I.O., with exception on HDMI, is at the back, which means if you want to use a case like this, Finally, you don't have to actually connect any cables to Raspberry Pi 4. This makes hiding all the cables behind the case really easy, and suddenly the case looks so much different without anything sticking to the side of it, where would be the typical Raspberry Pi 4 I.O. And I know sooner or later someone's gonna ask about the Iron Man figurine, so this is part of my Marvelous Notification project, you can watch it in here, and I'm gonna link it in the description as well so you could find it and maybe do it yourself. Apart from the flashy iron armor, the Pyron Man case offers several different features, starting with what's to be expected, this massive ice cooling tower heatsink, which is gonna be more than enough to cool your Raspberry Pi. We're gonna talk about the uh, thermal benchmarks in a second. But that's not the only advantage because we obviously have a front OLED display which is 1.96 inch and you can actually drive it yourself if you choose not to use the default libraries that Sunfounder is also providing. Next to the display you're gonna find a power button which will safely shut down your Raspberry Pi or enable OLED display depending on the configuration and a small dot which houses a infrared receiver. So if you fancy using Plex or Kodi instance and you have an infrared remote you can also set that up for no keyboard and mouse controls. For anyone looking to put a show, the Pyronman also includes addressable LEDs inside. There is a total of 16 LEDs that you can program yourself, change the colors or use existing libraries to play different animations. On that note, additional LEDs are available inside the fan, however those aren't addressable and if you would like to convert them, take a look at this video in which I actually converted one of those fans into the addressable LEDs so you could uh, maybe integrate that in a part of your setup on the Pyonman. And the last feature is hidden underneath it, which is the support for M.2 SSD. Those are SATA SSD, so make sure you're gonna get the correct one, but various different lengths are supported, so you'll be able to find something that is in your price range. I've mentioned that all the I.O. has been moved to the back, except from 40-pin GPIO header, which is still on the side, albeit lower, and the HDMI, so if you want to connect the display, fortunately you'll have to connect it at the side. As the case is shipped in pieces, it takes around 40 minutes to assemble. However, there are a couple of issues I've noticed during the assembly, which I really like Sunfounder to address at some point. My biggest complaint was the main ribbon. It connects the 40 pin uh, GPIO header extension to the main board, and you'll have to use that because that's how the Raspberry Pi gets its power as well from the main PCB. However, the ribbon provided is quite bulky, and I had some problems seating it correctly into the header. So it took me a couple of tries, and I am strongly in opinion that uh, they should include a slightly thinner uh, ribbon or maybe work on a slightly different socket for that ribbon because it's really hard to lock it. Another thing that they could work on are the connectors because they're actually using the DuPont wires to connect directly to the PCB. I wish they used the proper connectors for it because the buttons and LEDs are connected this way and it kind of looks like oh, 
they could have done that better. And lastly, the USB Type-C power delivery it doesn't support actually USB Type-C PD. The quick charge works just fine and the regular uh, Raspberry Pi adapters will be just fine. However, if you are using proper USB Type-C PD, you'll be disappointed because the case won't power on. Uh, so, you know there are a lot of custom things that you can take advantage of. And actually to do so it's fairly easy, just slot in the SD card with the standard Raspberry Pi operating system and then use the script from documentation to load all the firmware that's going to allow you to set the Pioneer case in any way you like. It's relatively simple as you can pass the commands with parameters or you can simply access the text file to modify it to your liking. It also means that you can change certain features programmatically without actually writing a code because you'll be able to pass it as a parameters. It's very handy if you just want to experiment. And the things that you can edit and change include the uh, animations of the RGB LEDs and colors, uh, fan profiles and also how all the display displays the data. If you want to display a different set of data, you'll probably have to write it yourself because only one screen is included. However, I gave it a test with the 52Pi uh, libraries and Argon E on default display, and you'll be able to use those two without any modifications. As the case looks precisely like mini PC, it's only fair that we're going to run some benchmarks, right? I mean, that's what PC guys do. Run benchmarks day and night. So I'm gonna have a couple of them because obviously the case is much smaller, there's no... You know how it works. We're gonna start with a thermal benchmark and there are some really really cool features. Sorry for the pun. I was testing this case in ambient temperature of 17.5 Celsius. So I was quite surprised that for the most part the fan never kicked in because it was set to 50 degrees. Now at idle I would have a temperature at around 42 degrees and that's fine, but as soon as I stressed it the temperature hiked to 49 degrees and occasionally the fan would turn on for about 5 seconds then turn off because the temperature wouldn't really rise above 50 degrees. So I lowered the threshold temperature for the fan so it would be spinning all the time and run the same benchmark. At idle I would have a temperature of 32 degrees which is really cold and at a stress test, so during the stress test, the temperature would rise to about 40 degrees, which is really cool as well. And I think part of it is thanks to the metal body of the case, because it acts as a giant passive heatsink. I know there is a fan and it actively pushes the air inside, however, having all that uh, cooking inside the case wouldn't be ideal. For example, like on 52 Pi case, which I reviewed, earlier, but in this instance uh, Pionman has actually ability to dissipate that heat through the case because, well, it's made of metal. And while we're talking about fun, the actually fun isn't very quiet and for the most part you won't be spinning much at all unless you're going to overclock your Raspberry Pi. And to be fair, this is ideal case for that scenario not only provides you with the excellent cooling for most of the components on the board because it's not just connected to the CPU but thanks to the aluminium bits the air inside remains cooler so you can easily crank your CPU on the Raspberry Pi uh, for app and enjoy the benefits of faster processing. My next and last benchmark was about a SSD. Now, I have a Kingston A400 M.2 SATA SSD. It's important that you pick SATA, not NVMe, because NVMe isn't supported. And it boots just fine from a USB as well. There's a guide about it here. So the speed of your storage will depend on several factors, starting with the speed of actual SSD that you have installed. Now, that's going to be then uh, further limited by the fact that Raspberry Pi 4 uses USB bus to interface with the storage and that provides some of the overhead in there that you will have to deal with. Furthermore, if you're using and testing the speed over the network, you'll be constantly limited to one gigabit per second and that's going to be your final metric. So to verify that the PCB itself isn't slowing us down, I simply unplugged it, plugged it to a PC via USB uh, 3.0 and run the speed benchmark. And I'm pleased to tell you that actually the results are within my expectations. I mean, that uh, drive advertised anywhere from 450 megs per second to 500, and I was hitting around 
420, which is fair enough for the USB connection. Other than the shortcomings I've mentioned, there is only one thing. I wish the case came in black. Now, it's not a big issue because I have a can of the black spray paint and I can be fixed within seconds. However, it would be nice to have an option. Now, how much money do you have to pay for it? Well, the case costs $63.99 USD, so it's actually not that expensive considering how much features you're getting in it and how much tinkering time you're actually gonna get uh, dialing everything to your perfection. So if you are sold on this, then in the description of this video, you're going to find all the information about the case, where to get it, and the link to the article where you can get a little bit more information and the link to different projects showcased in this video too. So shout out and thank you for Sun Founder for sending the case so I could take a look at it and share my opinion with it. And as for now, you know how it works. I do not have a posting schedule. So if you want to keep in touch, find out what's next, then you know how YouTube works. I'm not going to explain that. But I have a couple of social media listed down below. Uh, go check it out, uh, follow me, and keep the conversation going. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.